So today we're talking about this, the Sony a7 III. It's a pretty legendary camera and it came out almost six years ago. It was announced in February of 2018, but does it still hold up today compared to a lot of the other competition that it has out there? So if you don't know me, my name is Thomas. I'm a guy from Ireland who moved to Kentucky about six years ago. And when I moved to the States, actually a big, the biggest portion of my income was primarily through photography and videography. I did a couple of commercials, a lot of short stories, a lot of church work, um, as a handful of weddings, different things like that. And almost all of it until recently was shot on the Sony a7 III. Eventually I ended up getting into cinema cameras and Blackmagic cameras, but most of the time, especially all of my photography work, was all done on the a7 III. It was the first camera that I ever pre-ordered. I, I started photography on Nikon. I got a, a little D5300, which is the, it was a fine camera at the time. And then when this was announced in 2018, I, I thought I have to get this. And um, so I pre-ordered it. And as soon as it came in the mail, uh, it, it, I immediately fell in love with it. I had this and one lens, which is the 85 millimeter. It was the only lens I had, but it was awesome. And I loved using it and it was super, super fun. But it's coming up to six years old, which is crazy. It's been, it's crazy to think that it's been six years since this came out. And I would argue that the image quality that comes out of this camera is still fantastic for today particularly for photography. But the question is, is it still relevant? Should you still uh, use this camera or should you upgrade or should you even buy one of these if you're looking for a new camera today? Now, if you're to buy one of these new today, it's gonna to cost you about 14 or $1,500. Uh, I think currently it's on sale for 1,300 if you're getting the body only, and um, which is, you know, a fair price uh, for the camera that it is. And for that amount of money, you're getting a fantastic camera that can take great photos, great video at a decent price. So for photography, I think it's still an absolutely fantastic camera. It's got a, I think it's a 24 megapixel sensor. Um, I'll put it on the screen if I'm wrong, but I think it's 24. Um, and it takes great photos. It's incredibly sharp. It's good in low light. Um, and the colors are really decent. I, I like the colors. You can push them around quite a lot, especially if you shoot in raw. Um, and with a great lens, this camera is incredible for photography. It's actually still my wife's A camera for all of her photography work. She does a lot of portraits and a lot of uh, family shoots and stuff like that. Um, and, and she absolutely loves it. I've tried to give her other cameras like the Sony a6700 that you're looking at right now, but she just likes this one. She likes having the, the full size viewfinder and the screen. She actually prefers the, the tilting screen. We're gonna talk a bit more about that in a second. But if you're in front of the camera taking photos, um, actually having the tilting screen can be pretty beneficial. Um, sometimes the full articulating screen can kind of get in the way. Um, there's other times where it's better, but uh, for photos, actually personally, I think she would say the same thing. I, I quite like the tilty screen for photography. Now the form factor of this camera is great. Um, it's the same style of body that you'll find on all of their new full frame A7 series of cameras. It uses the, uh, the newer uh, Z100 battery, which gets a lot more power than the old MP, W50 something battery like that. Um, you know, so it, the battery life is great. The quality of the photos is great. It can take fantastic video. And I really do think that as a camera, the quality that it produced really holds up in 2023, 2024. Um, I don't think you can go wrong with still using this camera today. But I do have to say, I don't actually know if it's worth buying one of these today. No, let me let me talk about this a little bit more. This camera, again, will produce great quality images and loads of people have this camera. So I would encourage you, don't sell this camera. Unless you're gonna use it, the funds to buy a better camera and that's your only other option to get higher quality, I don't think you necessarily need to sell this. It'll still make a great B camera, even a great A camera, especially for photography. I, th I think people are very quick to buy and sell all of their gear very quickly and you end up regretting it and wanting to go back and have it. And, and you know, and I've fallen prey to that. Like I sell stuff all the time because I'm always wanting the next best gear. Uh, and usually the only funds I'll have to be able to buy that stuff is to sell my other stuff. But this is a camera that we've held on to for five or six years now, but we still have it and we still use it all the time. Now, if you're, if you are the type of person who's wondering, well, okay, if it's, if it's such a great camera, should I go out and buy it today? That's where things get a lot more complicated. You see this camera um, brand new is going to cost you about 13 or $1,400, um, which is, which is a good price for the camera. Um, but you also have to ask the question of what other options are there for that same amount of money? If you're going to buy this new and spend thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars, I honestly don't know if I would recommend that, because you can get the Sony A6700, which you're watching right now, for the same price, and it has a lot more features. It's got the full articulating screen, and um, it's got phenomenal photo capabilities, phenomenal video, uh, much better video than this has. It's got 10-bit color, it's got 4K 120, it has a lot of AI features, it's got better autofocus. Um, it has a lot of features that I wish that the camera did have for the same amount of money. The only difference is it's a crop sensor. And if you've watched this channel before, I hope you understand that 
I really don't think that full frame is as big as people make it out to be. I don't think it's quite as important. I think the low light performance of the A6700 is on par with the A7 III. Now it's not on par with the A7 IV or the A7S III, but it, I, I think it does just as well as the Sony A7 III does. The only difference, obviously, is that it's APS-C. And I love APS-C. I think it's great. I think it's more affordable. It's smaller form factor, all that kind of stuff. But let's say you want to get full frame. That's your only option. You're like, nope, if it's not full frame, I'm not doing it. Well, I still think there might be a better option than this. And that's actually the A7C. You see, a couple of years ago, Sony released the A7C. This is kind of the, one of their new lines, the, the compact version. And it's basically an A7 III in the form factor of this style of camera, the A6700, it's smaller. The only main difference of the camera is that the viewfinder is in a different location and it's not as good. I think for less money, you can get a similar camera in a slightly smaller form factor um, for a couple hundred dollars less. And the, the quality that's gonna come out of them is almost identical, which to me is actually kind of hard to say, right? Because I love this camera. This is one of my favorite cameras of all time. Um, but nowadays there's just so many great options. Sony are pumping out cameras like there's no tomorrow. There's always a new camera um, and they're really starting to pour a lot of stuff into their APS-C line. They've got new lenses, they've got new camera bodies uh, and the features that you can get for the money in their APS-C line are hard to beat. What I will say though is if you have a Sony a7 III, don't get rid of it. Don't sell it just yet. This is a legendary camera. It can still take fantastic photos, fantastic videos. Um, don't fall into the, the gear obsession world where you feel like you have to always get the next best stuff. This camera will do a great job for a long time still to come. Most people in the photography, videography world don't need 10-bit. It's nice to have, it's great and it's enjoyable. Most people don't need it. Most people um, are not gonna be shooting 4K 120. Uh, or even 4K 60. A lot of people just want to have 4K 24 um, or 1080p is still great if you upscale it. Um, so for a lot of people, the features that you can get with this camera are great. And if you own one, don't sell it just yet. Unless you really are in a situation where you need to, you're making a good amount of money with your cameras that justify you spending more money on a better one, then, then sure. But if you have one of these, don't worry, don't feel like you have to sell it to get the next best thing because you can still get a great product out of this camera. And if you're looking to buy a new camera today, um, I wish I could recommend you this. I really do. But I think the A6700 for the same amount of money um, is just going to be a better camera for most people. Even though it's APS-C, you know, and even though it's got that smaller form factor, I do think it's a better camera overall. Or the Sony A7C, especially if you're shopping used, you can get some incredible deals on that camera. All that to say, this camera is legendary in my opinion. I love this thing. It has, it was the thing that kickstarted my career and it's brought me to where I'm at now and the skills that I have, I learned on this camera. So if to all my people who are A7 III users in the comments, I wanna see your stuff, tag your Instagram down there. I wanna see all the amazing photography and videography work that people have captured with this camera. And if you're interested in seeing that kind of stuff, go to the comments down below, look for some other people's work because it's a legendary camera, and I think the camera industry have a lot to owe to this camera. It's kind of set a benchmark um, within the last five to 10 years of what a good hybrid camera is supposed to be. Um, and I think a lot of the new cameras that we're seeing from Panasonic or from Canon and all that kind of stuff are taking a lot of notes from the release of this camera. But that's all I got for this video. Drop a comment down below because I want to know what your thoughts are on the Sony a7 III. If you love it, if you hate it, what your thoughts are. And if you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button. It really helps get this video out there. And if you'd even be willing, I'd love it if you would hit the subscribe button as we continue to build this channel. I'd love to hit 4,000 subscribers by the end of the year. That'd be kind of crazy. And I want to say a huge thank you to all of you who have done so. I really appreciate all of you. And I hope that you have a wonderful day.